Okay. So neither Carpini, William of Rubric, or Marco Polo put him in Africa. Even though they're calling him an Ethiopian. Letting you know Ethiopian. Ethiops is a Greek word which means burnt face or what? Fiery looking. Fiery looking boss? Like that fire? Like that dragon. So, so the three mentioned travelers had placed him not in Africa but in the most remote part of the east. They just found us in America, my not In the most remote parts of the east, in the neighborhood of China. Where's China? <laughs> you know what it is, wave circles. This is China. This circumstance they overlook. But we must first proceed to give some accounts of the Dalai Lama. He lives in the pagoda in the mountain of Patola, which according to the Jesuit Gobil is under 29 degrees 6 north latitude. His followers explain the nature of his immortality in the following manner. So this Dalai Lama is also immortal just like the priest king Pastor John with the fountain of youth. With the fountain of youth. But they're explaining his immortality uh, with this type of ritual here. They're saying um, the Dalai Lama, his followers explain the nature of his immortality in the following manner, that his soul after the death of his body passes into another human being, which is born at the exact, exactly at that time. And this man is the new Dalai Lama. So it's like a spiritual transfer, which is not that unique because Moses laid his hands on Joshua, passed that Ruach. Now, jo now Joshua popping up, the real Joshua. Not Jay Seekman, the real Josh. <laughs> He's moving, you know, keeping the waterfalls from falling, stopping the sun in its tracks. So the sun, the sun stands still, the moon stands still, the waterfalls stand still. He's parting the Jordan waters, the tribe is crossing on dry ground. I'm talking the real Josh, the real Magi. This ain't water to wine. This ain't walking on water. This is stopping the waterfalls from flowing. The mighty waterfalls parting the water like Moses. So we've seen what happens with, you know, these spiritual transfers happen. That's not, that's not, uh, you know, that wouldn't be weird for us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Reminds me of that movie Falling. You know, time is on my side. He just passes the energy, you know, from person to person. But. Which is, you know, maybe this is an excuse to cover up the fountain of youth immortality. It says his soul passes into another human body, which is born exactly at that time. This man is the new Dalai Lama. Others relate that they keep a young man in the pagoda during the life of the Dalai Lama, who is to succeed him. So maybe they're faking the funk. Maybe they're acting like they're immortal, but they're really just <coughs> in that part of India, you know, keeping some. A uh, young jabroni around and you know passing him through like he got the new soul you know <laughs> you know because the real Presta has the water for immortality you don't have to do these shenanigans you know what I'm saying so it says almost all the nations of the east except the Mohammedans believe the metempsychosis as the most important article of their faith especially the Indians, the inhabitants of Tibet, and Ava, or Awa, the Parguans, Siamese, Mongols, all the Kalmyks, or Kalmyks, and the greatest part of the Chinese and Japanese, according to the doctrine of the Metin psychosis, the soul is always in action and never at rest. So, you know, are they passing the souls around? Are they passing the frequency around? Or they just acting like they're tapped into immortality, but not really. You know, we're gonna get some more touching on this Dalai Lama. We, you know, I just wanted to get familiar, man, with that Preston John legend and his sources one more time. We're gonna slide over to a familiar book as well called The Searches for an Imaginary Kingdom, the legend of the kingdom of Preston John. 
and I got the hard copy of that as well. I'm gonna get a piece of this right here. Just you know, got it up in, in Google Books because it's kind of dark in here right now. So I gotta use what I got, my night. But I'm gonna pop it off right here on page 125, foreshadowing the legends hero. From this point of view, the author of our source was correct, and probably his contemporaries understood him, but we accustomed to business language and statistical exactitude and simple are simply unable to understand the system of images and associations defined behind the metaphors, the true content which was evident to the medieval reader. It means that the problem in translation does not lie in a simple substitution of words and phrases, but to a greater extent in explaining the sense and the manner of exposition. Yes, but that is not all. Historical reality was displaced by vividness of purport, but not entirely. We shall be convinced of this if we look at the question of the northern bro northern border of Kara Katan Kane. If you don't know what Kara Katai is by now, go surf the wave. We got 102 Preston Johns on deck and a playlist for you. <laughs> but the Kara pretty much means black or melanated in Turkish or you know these languages. Katan is also Cathay, so you can call it black Cathay. You know what I'm saying? The Khan is the priest, the Khanate is the priesthood, so Cathay means pure land, so it's like the black priesthood of the pure land, or the melanated priesthood of the pure land would be my translation of the Kar Katan Kane. Melanated Nagas of the pure promised land in America, India, superior priesthood. Yeah, that's right, let's go. Unlike the southern and western borders, the northern limits of Kar Katan kingdom cannot be determined with sufficient certainty. It is generally considered that this frontier passed along the river Emil, I-M-I-L, but to the north in the Urtish Basin, the powerful tribe of the Naaman lived. Their origin and ethnic allegiance still remains an open question. So the Naaman are a mystery. So when they say that they were linked up with Preston John, that's two mysteries forming one thing. You know what I'm saying? They're both together. Let's go. They also say that the Preston, you know, ran into the security of the Naaman or, you know, had the security of the Naaman during the Genghis Khan War, you know what I mean, for the Naaman play. Their origin and ethnicity or ethnic allegiance is an open question. So that's a mystery. We're not going to tell you what ethnicity these Naaman are. <laughs> The history of the naming is authentically known only from the period of Genghis Khan, i.e. the second half of the 12th century. So the first half of the 12th century, you're pretty much talking, you know, King David, Preston John. You know, when you hear King David, you're talking Preston John. After 1220 or so, you're talking Genghis Khan. Most of the time when you're hearing about Preston John or King David um, at this time, because the title was taken. Genghis Khan went to war with Preston, 1202, so the title was taken, the, the David title was taken, the Preston title was taken, so don't get thrown off by these Preston Johns or King Davids after 1220 or so, because that's pretty much the takeover of another melanated tribe, call it Moab, call it, you know, Canaanite, call it whatever you want to call it, but this was like a biblical story happening out in real time, you know what I'm saying? In America, right? More and more war. Let's go. Yeah, man.